Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Well, today I'm gonna to be reviewing something a little bit different. This is a mini spy cam. It is the MW5. Now this has infrared emitters on it so it can see at night. So you can use it in the daytime and nighttime. It does record sound. It has motion zones you can set up so it can only, it will uh, send alarms to your smartphone, let you notice whenever there's movement. And you can set up zones so you know where you know, if you want to monitor just a specific area, and it's very small as you guys can see here, so it easily can be concealed so that nobody even knows it's there. So if you want to monitor to make sure that someone's not sneaking in out of your house at night or something, like you got a teenage uh, son and you want to make sure that he's not sneaking out, well, you can have it uh, do that. Now, here is the camera right here. And it's on the end of this ribbon cable, it is so small. And if I put a dime up next to it here, you can see just how little this camera is extremely small. There's four little infrared bulbs, I guess you could call them on here. And that's going to illuminate in the spectrum outside of what a human can see. But the camera can see it and it illuminates the room so it looks dark to you. And the camera's obviously able to see everything in sort of a darkish, grayish, black and white. You know, it doesn't have full color, but you're going to be able to see movement in your house. Now, this records at 2K video. So it's not 4K. It says it advertises 4K, but that's just for what and you take a snapshot or an image still. It's in 4K, but it's 2K at about 15 frames per second when it's recording video. Now you'll be able to see that all in the live view of the app and the app is extremely comprehensive. And then that'll be coming up after we finish the table review, I'll go over the app. But yeah, it's a really, really comprehensive uh, device and it has a lot of options you can do. But it also records the video to your micro SD card and you can put that in this little slot here and you can just take it out. I've got a 32 gig one in there right now, spring loaded like many of the micro SD cards. I can get it back in there. You got to be careful when you're pressing this in that if you uh, miss it, it'll pop back out and fly out of there. You have a micro USB port below it, and that's for charging the LiPo, which is right back here. This is an 800 milliamp hour uh, LiPo battery back here. And this will uh, power the device when it's recording. You know, if you have it set up, especially when you're recording, you use a little more power for around two hours. And they give you a rather long micro USB cable. So if you plug this in, and you wanna keep it powered up, and you have like a power bank nearby or a USB outlet, um, then you could keep it charged for a long time. And in fact, you, you know, if it's plugged into the wall, you, you know, as long as you want it to record, a you know, power bank, depending on the size of it, I think you could probably go several days off of a power bank. Then next to that, you have your on and off switch right here in the middle. It's be very hard to see because of the glare. And then you have a reset button. If you need a reset device, you just press in. It, looks, it kind of looks like a switch, but you just press that in. And here is your Wi-Fi antenna. Now this will sort of tie into your home Wi-Fi. So when you first get into the app, the Weibo Cam app, you will uh, sort of set up your account with them. Then you'll give it your Wi-Fi information. I know a lot of people don't necessarily like doing that, but if you want to be able to see the live feed, you're going to have to give it your Wi-Fi information so that it can connect to your network. And then once you do that, it will give you a QR code on your smartphone and you'll hold it about six inches away from the camera and the light will be flashing blue and red on the box. And that tells you it's sort of like in binding mode, I guess you could say. And once that light goes to just a, a blue flashing light only, then it tells you that it got the information that it needed to see with the camera. And then it's gonna start setting up the Wi-Fi in the device. And then once it does that, then you know, the, and the app will guide you through and let you know. And then you can go on in and then start using the, the uh, device and set up all the options. So like I said, there's not a whole lot that's actually to discuss here. Um, you know, it, it comes, everything's in this little box here and there's just, your instruction manual is very, very small and is a little hard to read, but it's w rather well written. You just probably might need it. So if you're old like me, you probably need a magnifying glass. Now it's gonna store those video files on the micro SD card. Um, it doesn't actually store them to the phone, but there's a way to actually download them from the SD card to your phone. But most people are gonna want to access the storage on your SD card to actually look at the files that you recorded, whether you've got it recording all the time, or you got it set to only record when it triggers an emo motion alarm, 
or you can schedule it in the app to record at certain intervals. And it records in a very odd format, and I discussed it at the end of the actual app uh, segment coming up here in a moment. It records in AVX format, so you're going to, um, you need an app from them or a, a PC and Mac program that can convert that into an MP4 so you can play it. AVX you can't play. You try to and Windows is going to go, huh? It doesn't know what to do. So you need something to convert it. It's a, it's a free uh, program. It has like two buttons. It is unfortunately not in English, but it's very simple. You're just going to navigate to the location and then you're going to uh, click the button, which I assume is start, but it's in a different language. And then it'll open all those up. It'll convert them and it'll save them back to the same directory that it opened them up from, and then you're good to go. So it's it's a it's a minor little inconvenience, it's probably my biggest gripe with this. But they claim the AVX is less susceptible, I guess, to like corruption uh, or file. You know, even if the if the device were to power off, and then it, the video file won't corrupt because if you run out of battery power, that could happen on a lot of other formats like MP4 and that. It, the file's probably gonna be corrupted. So I think that's why they use that AVX um, video codec on this. But you know, that's just a very minor step you have to do. So I'll include links to both the PC and the Mac versions because they're not located exactly where the instruction manual says it is on the website. And you can download that for both the PC and the Mac to convert those files. All right, guys, that shows you the camera itself. What we'll do now, I'll get over to the app section where I'm gonna go through the entire app with you guys. And at the end of this video, I'll have some daytime footage with sound from within my living room. And then we'll come back with some night vision, let you guys see what it looks like at night. Uh, whenever you're looking at it at full darkness, there's some weird shadows the camera picks up. I don't know if that's from the infrared sensors. It's still, you can still see everything. It's just, it looks like, I guess you could say ghosted image. It looks like there's some ghost images on the left and right sides. And that is where the infrared bulbs are. But then I switched the lights on in the house and you can see, I don't have all the lights on, just some lights. And this is at nighttime. What it looks like with some illumination, it looks a whole heck of a lot better, but it still stays in that infrared, like night mode, so you don't have the color. But I think it looks a lot better with a little bit of light. It's like if you had this outdoors and it was a full moon, it would look a lot better than if it was pitch black. And then of course you guys saw the full color mode where the camera looks pretty good recording in 2K. You can also record in standard definition within the app. You can tell to do that if you wish. All right guys, let's get over to the app and then and we'll wrap this video up at the very end. All right. All right, I'm in the WeWaCam app. And now this screen you're looking at here, this is the screen that you'll kind of navigate to everything from this main screen. You'll see this once you've gone through the setup process uh, to connect the actual cam to your Wi-Fi network, which is a pretty um, um, straightforward process, which I mentioned in the table review. But here you have an alarm list, that little bell. You can click this and this would tell you any triggered alarms because this has motion activation. I'm not going to click the playback, but the playback is going to show you any um, recorded clips on the SD card that you can then download to your phone and play. And then you have a settings button uh, next to it. And above it, you can turn on and off your alarm notifications. Down at the very bottom, you have my camera. And then in the middle, you have a toolbox. And then you have the account and support. And we'll look at all that in just a moment. So. When you click on, now if you, if you want to access the camera, you can click on the play button on the live preview there where it says Ryan's Spy Cam, which is a real a creative name on my part. And you can see it says online. So we are online and connected. But I'm not going to go to that yet. I'm going to go to the settings. So I'll click on that. And you can see you have a bunch of settings inside of here. Like I said, this is a very comprehensive app. And I'm actually rather impressed with the app. It can almost be a bit too much, it's almost overbearing because of the sheer amount of settings. So you can turn on or off your alarm push notifications. You can see that there. I'm gonna turn it back off. That's going to send notifications to your phone when it detects uh, motion so that you um, get a notification that there was movement. Inside your record settings here, right below that, you can switch between HD and standard, which you can also do in the live uh, video screen as well. Then you can go to continuous recording, which is going to constantly record a video from the moment that the camera is turned on until it runs out of power or you turn it off. And it's going to save that to the SD card. 
Then you have alarm record, and that's going to only record video whenever that senses motion. So that might be a better option. Now it can hold between four and 128 gig SD cards. So you can get a lot of video recorded to a SD card, but if you go to alarm recording, you're not gonna have to worry about you know, <clears throat> pulling that card out and doing anything for quite a while. Then scheduled recording below that, you can actually just say, I want it to only record at these certain times. Now, because it only has a two hour battery life, um, that's why I would recommend using like a power bank or have it plugged into a USB adapter on a wall if you're gonna do anything like that because you're not gonna be able to schedule recordings if it's sitting up on the wall and it's dead after two hours. So let's go ahead and go out of that. Now before I do, you can see where it says turn on recording. Whenever I first uh, was setting up the app, this is turned off. And if this is turned off, then it won't record any video at all to the SD card in the camera. So you, got, you do have to turn that on before you uh, proceed if you want to capture any video. Camera info just gives you some firmware and your IP address uh, on your local network and all that. Camera editor, uh, just sort of just your, your camera's name and your password for the camera. You give it yourself. Um, then you have your alarm settings. And this is like, again, turning on the notifications, which you can also do on the main screen. Um, then there's a whole bunch of this stuff. I don't really know what that one right there is, but you can, um, below the push ID, you can set up an email address to have it email you every time there's a notification of a movement because it, it will work with their cloud service for that. You can do an alarm schedule, you know, whenever you want it to notify you during these hours only. Then you have motion detection, which right now I have set to on. This is really cool. This is like what our like ring doorbell has. This is something that I'm shocked this has this. This is really fantastic for a really inexpensive um, little spy camera. You can turn on motion detection. Then, then below it here at the bottom, you see you've got a sensitivity meter, which I've got it set in the middle. You can slide it over to the right and make it super sensitive to where the slightest bit of change in the video, you know, when it sees a size change, which would be um, movement, it uh, will trigger an alarm. Oops, I went backwards there. That's my silly uh, uh, Pixel phone. When you pull from the size of the screen, it goes backwards. You can go all the way down to one, so it's gonna take a, quite a bit of movement to trigger it there. Let's see if I can get the, it's gonna be difficult here. There we go, we, because it wants to pull that darn arrows. That's the funny thing about the Pixel phones. The forward and back arrows are pulling from the side. When you have an app where you need to grab the sides, it can be a real pain in the behind to try to do that without going uh, back or forward, uh, backwards on the uh, app. And then above that, you've got set motion zones. Now, this is really, really fantastic. You can go in here and you can draw an area where you only want it to look for motion within this area. So you've got this, let's say, set up outside your front door. You only want it to, and, and, and the camera can see the street and it can see your sidewalk coming to your door. You may want to draw a zone where it's only looking right in front of your door and it doesn't see the street because every time a car goes by, um, it's gonna trigger an alarm. You don't want to do that. So you can draw a zone below the street that we say only look at this zone. So you can make a big rectangle below your street and then it wouldn't see the street and then it wouldn't set any alarms. But you can see, you just click on add zone, you get a rectangle here. Oops, I went back, oh, I went backwards again. Sorry guys, it's just, it's my phone. You can set this here by dragging it. And I can say, hey, I only want, you know, these two Christmas trees to be looked at. And then I could click save. I'm not gonna do that because I don't want it looking at just that area there. But they would only look for motion with it then in that area right there. And then you just click save. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, delete that. So they did not set that zone and we'll go back out. And you can see down there too many false alarms. You know, if you get, it gives you some hints if you click that to uh, change some settings so you don't get bombarded with uh, alarms. And then below that, you've got um, Human Detection Pro. That's off because that's a subscription thing. You have to subscribe to their pro service, and you click that, and I'm sure if I, it won't do it. See, it says at the top you have to subscribe. That's going to look and let you know if it sees a person. So 
if you have this set up in your house and you're afraid of your teenage son sneaking out in the night or something, um, and in, that would be able to say, hey, that looks like a person moving in the house and not your cat. Because right now, with the basic settings, it's going to detect any motion, whether it's a large spider on the wall or your, uh, so a person in your house. And then uh, the smart sensor system. I don't know what that is. It's different areas of your house, and I just haven't uh, been able to figure that one out. And then you've got uh, network settings, and we are on Wi-Fi. Ethernet would obviously be if you had some sort of a Ethernet can, uh, adapter or something for that. I don't know how that would work. You can change your, your password, which I'm not going to click there. And then you've got um, your date and time. So you can set that so that it has a time stamp on your video so that that's correct. And there is an option here to actually remove that at one some point in here I saw it where you can change whether you want that to be visible you did now you have your video audio and LED so image reverse would be one of the things with this camera is it tends to the way the ribbon cable hangs is it's easier to mount lots of times with the cameras upside down so this would flip the video that's what I believe that's what it is so that it's not upside down um, and hopefully it'll 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 change that in your SD card recording as well. And there's there's your timestamp which I have on. That's nice if you had this up for some security reasons. You need to know exactly when this happened, even for insurance reasons or something. You've got a timestamp in the video, so I would recommend leaving that on. And you can also mute the mic in live video, which that would be. Do you want to mute it whenever you go to the live video feed? Uh, that there's no sound, but you can turn that on and off in the feed, in the live video feed as well. And you can mute the mic in recording so that there's no sound on your SD card recording. Then your infrared LED, those little bulbs that are around the uh, camera, you can have that set to auto to where it will come, the bulbs will, will power up whenever it detects low light, and then it will switch to the infrared mode. You have it always on where the bulbs are always powered and always off to where it would night vision would not work. Now, when I was doing some testing, even in the always on mode, you know, it will switch between visible light mode and infrared. I just believe that the infrared bulbs are always still broadcasting, I guess you could say, the infrared light. And I imagine turning on auto might be a bit of a power saving mode since you're not powering the infrared bulbs. That's my guess. Then even night mode schedule. But you could add, um, you know, I think whenever you want it to automatically switch to night mode, which would be infrared, because you may have it in a setting where there's some street light or there's some house light to where it's sort of uncertain. Because on where I had it here in my basement, I didn't have a whole lot of light. And depending on which way I held the camera, it would switch. And it was constantly switching between visible light mode with color and infrared night mode. And that was a bit annoying because it was constantly flipping back and forth between the two. So I could see where that would be very helpful to actually tell it what time you want it to switch to night mode only. In the top, you have between PAL and NTSC. That's between your European, like your 50 hertz and 60 hertz um, uh, um, TV set. I don't think it's really very important anymore, but it always wants to reset to PAL. And while, while before I start this video, I reset it to NTSC. But again, I don't think that stuff's too important anymore nowadays. And down here you've got um, SD card info. You can actually format the card here from within the app. And then you've got your cloud storage settings, which I've got it turned on. And it says I have no plan, so I'm not paying for one. So I don't think it's backing up the video to the cloud. I've not been to dig into that too much. But it might just allow you to use some of their basic cloud services like that email or warning and stuff like that. Camera management here is just like you can reboot it remotely, upload diagnostic info, which really means download. You're not you're downloading diagnostic information from the camera if you need to submit that to their tech support. You can turn the indicator light on and off. You know, if you have this thing hidden, that if it's extremely dark in a room, that little bitty light when it is on could give away the camera's location. And RTSP authentication, I believe, is something with like setting up username and password to use like a security camera system. 
in your house. And you can do a camera update if you need to update the firmware. I'm not going to click that. And then you've got a quick guide and frequently asked questions, which I believe is also that blue button in the upper right hand corner will do that as well. Let's go back to the main screen and see we're still online. Now in the middle at the bottom, we have the toolbox down here. And you can look at an album, which is accessing the different little like stills of the videos and photos that you've taken with it. Now photos you're going to have to do manually because it's just going to constantly record video. You can't set it up, to my knowledge, you can't set up to take still photos at certain intervals. Your alarm management here, you can tell like how long do you want the alarm to last, like 10 seconds. Um, you can block um, alarms and stuff like that. And it has your alarm log here, which you can see I have no alarms triggered. You can do a Wi-Fi test and discover. I'm not going to mess with that stuff. And then over here at the bottom right, you got account and support. Now you got my account info. I'm not going to click that. It might give away some personal information, but below that you got settings. You can see you've got alarm vibrate on your phone is triggered. Live video and alarm, um, alarm ring. And I believe what that's going to do is it's going to actually make a sound like your phone would be ringing when it's letting you, it'll vibrate and make an audible sound. You can actually select a ringtone. Again, almost a bit too much right now. I don't have the alarms turned on because it, wherever I set this is, it could be in the area where it's constantly getting triggered and your phone could get bombarded. So be very mindful of that. Then you got a notification bar icon, automatically start and foreground service. Just some very advanced settings right there. And below that, you got an update, which again, is updated. Maybe, I don't know if that's the app or if that is, let's click that. And that's just going to go to, yeah, look for an app update on the store. There's support options, sign out and exit the app. So that is all of the settings within the camera. Let's go and click um, the actual live feed here. And it's going to connect and let's flip it over here. And hopefully we've got a rotated screen here with the live feed. You can see we got it set up inside of my living room. You can see the Christmas trees and the TV off to the right. And very basic down here, you can do a manual record. I'm not going to click that because we're already recording. You got next to your little camera icon, which will let you take a, a photo still. And that's where they advertise you can get a 4K photo saved. And then you've got your sound on and off there. Now you won't hear any sound at this moment because I got my external mic plugged into the screen recorder. So that mutes the background sound, but we will include the sound in the video clip at the end that's off the SD card. And then you've got your SD and your UHD. So right now it says it's on SD, which I don't know if that's, if they consider that 720p, SD is usually 480p. It doesn't look too bad to me, but if I click the UHD, you should see, and sometimes this can be a little glitchy, but sometimes you see it switched back to SD because it says it's not enough bandwidth, but I'm down in my basement now. Let's see if it'll do it now. But whenever it clicks between the two, it, you'll see an improvement in the video. Yeah, it's, it's not a, it's not letting me switch it right now, but when I was doing it up earlier up in my living room or out, you know, in a different location where I was closer to everything, you just get a slightly better uh, look to the video quality and the live feed. It's probably going to do this air again, but yeah, I've never had that air before guys, but <laughs> it, it looks pretty darn good to me in this setting, but when you do click it and that does want to switch, then it's going to the, like the lights on the tree and stuff just looks a little bit more crisp. It's switching to that 2K video mode is what it's doing. But again, it's not letting me do it here. And I'm not going to redo this entire video because it's not cooperating with me. But I am connected to my 5G, but the camera itself um, can only connect to two G, uh, your 2.4 gigahertz band and not your 5 gigahertz. So that has less bandwidth. So you're going to run into some occasional problems in your network at home when you're using uh, the 2K video feed because of bandwidth limitations. Um, so depending on how good your signal is and stuff to the camera, um, it could end up where it was doing what it's doing to me right now. It's not wanting to switch between standard definition and uh, 2K video. But I mean, it looks really good to me. 
here on what it says as a standard. Again, it just looks a little bit better, a little more crisp. The lights look a little bit more crisp, but it's, it's a very small difference when you switch between the two. And this records at 15 frames per second, at least in the 2K video on SD card. So speaking of the SD card, what we'll do now is we'll end this video. It looks like it, I got kicked out of here. But um, what we'll do is we'll um, go to some SD card footage and let you guys see the video quality and we'll let you see the uh, hear the audio. All right, guys. That wraps up this part of the review. What we'll do is we get to that uh, footage. And I'm going to show you some daytime footage with sound and then at the end we'll go to the night vision let you see what it looks like up there at nighttime um, whenever um we're running the camera so you can see how well does the infrared work probably wait until the christmas trees are off that way that the, the camera doesn't get confused about whether it needs to be in visible light mode or infrared and just you see how that works i'm not going to do any um uh trigger warnings or anything like that we're just gonna let you guys see what the camera looks like during the day and night and how the sound is which i thought was pretty decent all right guys that wraps that up so let's get over to that footage